Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. I do want to encourage you to check out my wife's business, Sheer Eclipse at lilarose.biz. That's L-I-L-L-A rose dot biz slash Ashira. A-S-H-I-R-A. There you will find a wide variety of different hairpins, hair clips, and hair ties to fit a wide variety of different tastes and styles. Remember, that's Lila Rose dot biz slash Ashira. L-I-L-L-A Rose dot biz slash Ashira. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Mr. Chameleon. The original air date is March the 16th, 1949, and the title is The Firebug Murder Case. Next, Mr. Chameleon and The Firebug Murder Case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you all know, is the famous and dreaded detective of Central Police Headquarters who frequently uses a disguise or impersonation to confuse the criminals he is tracking down. In tonight's case, he appears in a clever disguise which the audience will at all times recognize. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Firebug Murder Case. There can be nothing more blood-curdling than the shriek of a fire engine as it races headlong through the New York streets. Even to Mr. Chameleon, the great detective... It is an exciting sound, a call to action. And we find him now with Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold as they hurriedly pull their police car over to one side. Wonder where that fire can be, Mr. Chameleon. It must be in that uh, next block, Dave. Engines are slowing down. Yes, they're stopping in front of that uh, three-story house. Come on, Dave, let's go. Hey, looks like quite a fire. On that first floor, anyway. Smoke is sure pouring out. Uh, It's a small grocery store, apparently, with living quarters above it. Let's take a look. Let us through, please. We're from Central Police Headquarters. Let us through, please. Hello, Mr. Chameleon. Aren't you glad you're with the police department and not the fire department? Hello, Mike. I don't know. I've always had a hankering to be a fireman like you. What started this one? I don't know, but it's a nasty one. Lots of smoke. There's an epidemic of them. This is the third time we've been out tonight. Is that so? Who is that um, hysterical woman over there? It's the wife of the man that owns that grocery store. I think her name's Kendall. Oh. Claims her husband's still in there. The firemen are in there now trying to get him out. Dave, let's go over there. It looks like our son with her, Mr. Chameleon. Yes. Oh, Helford, he's still in there. Your father's in there. Oh, they'll never get him out. Take it easy, Mother. There's nothing Help we can do about it. Well, maybe there is. Maybe the fireman will get him out alive, Mr. Kendall. What? Who are you? How'd you get through the fire lines? Well, my name is Chameleon. I'm a detective from Central Headquarters. Detective? What the devil's a detective doing here? And stop giving my mother false hope. I know my husband's dead. He's been suffocated by smoke. We tried to get through to him, but we couldn't. We couldn't. 
Well, maybe I can. What do you mean? I think I will give the boys a hand. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. <laughs> yes, Mike. <coughs> My hand's a little scorched, but otherwise I'm okay. Let's <coughs> lay him down on the sidewalk. Over here, Mr. Right. Chameleon, are you all right? Yes, I am, babe. We managed to get Kendall's body out before the flames reached him. Is he dead? He didn't have a chance in that smoke. He was suffocated to death long before we got to him. Hmm. Only he wasn't suffocated to death. He was shot in the back. Why? Mr. Chameleon. Where is uh, Mrs. Kendall and her son, Dave? I don't see them. Why, uh, a neighbor, some man named Watson, took them into his place. He has that hardware store right over there. Oh, I see. Dave, you take over, please. Report this to headquarters. I think I'll have a little talk with the murdered man's family. Mr. Watson, I'm sorry, but I've got to talk to Mrs. Kendall. I just told you that her husband was murdered. He was shot. I know, Mr. Chameleon, and I just can't believe it. Now, now, who would do a thing like that to poor Kendall? He was such a kind man, always giving credit in his grocery store. Well, such terrible things happen, no one's safe anymore. Uh, Mr. Watson, tell me, before I question the Kendalls, do you know of any enemies that he might have had? Well, I just told you he was the kindest man in the neighborhood. Now, of all people, he didn't have enemies. Well, he must have. He was murdered. What about his family? His family? Why, Mr. Chameleon, he was crazy about his son, Alfred. If anything, he always babied him too much. Well, what about his wife? Was he devoted to her? Well, uh, I, uh, I wouldn't know about that. I'm only a neighbor. Most neighbors know everything. Well, I'm going into the next room and talk to Mrs. Kendall and her son, Alfred. But, Mr. Chameleon, she's in such a state right now. You are very kind yourself, Mr. Watson, and you mean well. But Alfred Kendall Sr. happened to be murdered. Mrs. Kendall? Yes? It's that cop again. What do you want? Alfred, I just wanted to tell you and your mother that your father's body was recovered from the burning building. Oh, Alfred. Oh. I would like to ask what made you so sure that he was suffocated. But he was, Mr. Chameleon. I could see my husband lying there and I couldn't get through to him. Oh, I couldn't get through. He was lying on his face in the back room of the store. Yes, Alfred, with a bullet in his back. A bullet? I don't believe it. My father murdered? Yes, Alfred, your father murdered. And I presume you want to find your father's murderer. Alfred, oh, Alfred. Now take it easy, Mother, I'm still here. You've still got me. Yes, I've got you. I've got you, darling. Mr. Chameleon, who could have done this awful thing? Who could have hated my husband so much that they'd kill him? Well, don't you know, Mrs. Kendall? Don't you have any idea? No, no, of course I don't. Well, you must have some inkling. Did your husband uh, quarrel with anyone recently? No. Alfred, I believe that your mother is lying. Do you know of anyone who quarreled with your father? Oh, sure I do, but that oh. don't mean... Who was it? Alfred. Who was it? Answer me. Okay. It was my Uncle Jerry. Jerry Carter. Your brother, Mrs. Kendall? Yes, Mr. Chameleon, but that quarrel didn't mean anything. Honest, it didn't. Your husband quarreled with your brother. What was it about? Oh, just something personal. What was it about, Mrs. Kendall? It doesn't matter, does it? It matters very, very much. What did they quarrel about? Oh, because my husband and me had, had differences. And my brother Jerry, he took them too serious. But my husband wasn't a bad man, Mr. Chameleon. And he was a good father Mr. to Chameleon. Alfred. He... Where are you? I'm in here, Dave, with Mrs. Kendall and her son. Mr. Chameleon, I've got news for you. That fire was set. Set? You mean... You mean someone started it on purpose? And how they did. We found a pile of shavings and a long fuse. And gasoline had been sprinkled all around that grocery store. Gasoline? Oh, no, no. Mother! Oh, my poor husband. Yes, Mrs. Kendall, your poor husband. Where does your brother Jerry Carter live? Jerry couldn't have done it. Well, maybe not, but I still want to know where he lives. 221 Clark Street. Thank you, Alfred. And you take care of your mother. Dave, I'll see you down at Central Headquarters after I see Carter. But first, another word with the Kendall's neighbor, Mr. Watson. Mr. Watson? Mr. Chameleon, is what I just heard true? That fire was set on purpose? Yes, it is true. Now, what sort of thing is that? I, I tell you, no one's safe anymore. Mr. Watson, you should have told me that Mr. Kendall beat his wife. This is no time to hold back the truth. And so she admitted it, did she? I didn't think she would. She was so ashamed of his knocking her down. 
I heard it from someone who heard him fighting her. Brother Jerry Carter was with him. I didn't think she'd tell anyone. She didn't. All Mrs. Kendall said was that she and her husband had differences. But, Mr. Chameleon, I... was I... pretty sure there must have been more than that to it. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Well, where are you going? To see Jerry Carter, Mrs. Kendall's brother, who must have found it unbearable to watch his sister being abused by her husband. Who is it? Chameleon, from Central Headquarters. The police? Yes, open up. What do you want? You're Jerry Carter, aren't you? Why, yes. The brother of Mrs. Alfred Kendall? Yes. Why are you packing a suitcase, Mr. Carter? Are you leaving town? Why, no, 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 I'm not. I'm just moving out of this room, that's all. My time is up. I can't afford to go on paying this kind of rent. Well, that's quite strange, Mr. Carter. I just talked to your landlady, and she told me that your rent was paid a month in advance. Say, listen, what is this? What are you doing here anyway? You say your name is... Chameleon. You're the famous detective. What do you want with me? What have I done? If you don't know, Mr. Carter, why are you leaving town? Oh, because I had to get out. There's an unhappy family situation here, and I... just have to get away from it. Because your brother-in-law, Alfred Kendall, abused your sister, beat her. Mr. Carter... Your brother-in-law has been murdered. What? And his store was set on fire to conceal that murder. Is that the truth? You think I'm lying, Carter? Your sister and your nephew, Alfred, insisted he'd been suffocated in the fire. But I happened to drag out the body in time. I discovered that he had been shot. She insisted he'd been suffocated. What do you know about it? Nothing, Mr. Chameleon. I only know that my sister was unhappy. Why? Well, she was just... She was just unhappy. What about? About her marriage, I suppose... Lots of marriages are unhappy. Your brother-in-law was shot when the fire started about nine o'clock this evening. Where were you at that time? Well, I... I can't remember. I would try to remember if I were you. Well, I was... I was just walking around. I, I had supper at seven o'clock, and then I, I... Well, I just walked around. After which you came back here and started to pack your suitcase. Mr. Carter, I... What's that? Well, it sounds like another fire. Another one. There have been a lot of them around this neighborhood, all of them incendiary, started by a firebug. Uh, 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 no, you don't. Come, Come back here. Let me go. You... Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, Mr. Connor. I thought a tap on the chin was better than having to use my gun. All right, come along quietly. I'm taking you to central headquarters and holding you there for further questioning. Mr. Chameleon and the Firebug murder case continues in just a moment. Your own doctor will tell you that there is no reason in the world why you should suffer from the painful symptoms of a cold, especially when it's so easy to quickly relieve such symptoms as that headachey feeling and muscular aches and pains. Just take two Bayer aspirin tablets with a full glass of water and you get fast relief because Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work in two seconds. And if your cold is accompanied by a sore throat, gargle with three Bayer aspirin tablets dissolved in one-third of a glass of water. This highly potent medicinal gargle almost instantly soothes the tender throat membranes, relieves pain and irritation. So when you're suffering from painful cold symptoms, take two Bayer aspirin tablets with a full glass of water and then to relieve accompanying sore throat, dissolve three Bayer tablets in one-third of a glass of water and gargle. When you buy, ask for Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the Firebug murder case. A man named Kendall has been murdered, shot in the back, and a fire started in his store to cover that murder. That much is clear to Mr. Chameleon. But a great many other things about the strange case are shrouded in mystery. Now, Mr. Chameleon is at police headquarters questioning the suspect, Jerry Carter, with whose story he's far from satisfied. Carter, let's get this straight. You claim you don't know anything about your brother-in-law's murder? I tell you, I don't know anything, Chameleon. That's all I've got to say. What do you know about the fires that have broken out in your neighborhood? I don't know anything about them either. Then why did you try to break out of your room when I mentioned firebug to you? Answer me that. 
I don't know, Chameleon. Do you happen to know, then, exactly what an incendiary fire is? Well, sure, sure. It's a fire that somebody started. One reason incendiary fires are started is for vengeance. Another is for money. Well, I didn't start any fires. Then where did you get the thousand dollars that we found in the lining of your coat? Thousand dollars? Police searches are very clever, Carter. You didn't even know they took it off you. Now, where did you get that money? And tell me, and tell me quickly. Well, I... I was keeping it for my sister. She didn't want her husband to know she had it. And her husband, your brother-in-law, was murdered. Which one of you killed him, you or your sister? Neither of us killed him. Why did she tell me her husband had been suffocated in the fire when actually he was murdered? If you're trying to put me on a spot, Chameleon, you can't get away with it. We'll find out if I can. Now tell me, who is running an extortion racket in your neighborhood? Extortion racket? What's that? You know as well as I do. Protection money from business people to keep their stores from being damaged, wrecked, or set on fire. Now, listen. Or to keep from being murdered, as your brother-in-law was. You can't plant this on me. Then it was your sister who did it. Is that what you mean? Oh, so now you're trying to plant it on her, are you? Both of you have been lying to me all the way through, and you are not very good liars. I've told you the truth. Believe me, Carter, I'll soon find out whether you have or not. And if you dream tonight, dream of fires, murder, and extortion... It may give you an idea of what I expect to find out from you tomorrow. And a few hours later, we find Chameleon pacing the floor in the office of the Commissioner of Police, who is saying... So you still think, Chameleon, that there's more to this than the murder of that man Kendall? I think that behind Kendall's murder, there is a sinister background of a maniacal firebug of terrorism, violence, and extortion. Well, we've got 50 detectives scouring the district for members of that extortion ring. So far, nothing. It's up to me, isn't it, Commissioner? How are you going about it? I'm going to pose as Tony Larson, who owns a small stationery store. Mm -hmm. I've already made arrangements to presumably take over a small store located in the Kendall's general neighborhood. But Chameleon, these... Hello, Commissioner. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, I have another fire to report. Where, Dave? In your own apartment, Mr. Chameleon. My apartment? Yes, sir. Someone tried to burn you out an hour ago. There was very little damage, though. They caught it in time. I see. So these criminals are trying to scare me off, are they? Well, they picked the wrong man. Chameleon, you understand, don't you, that you may be dealing with the most deadly gang of extortionists this city has ever known. If you assume that disguise, you may be placing yourself in the hands of the killers. Commissioner, you know my motto. The innocent must be protected, the guilty punished. Sometimes it pleases me most to see the innocent protected. But in this case, with criminals as vicious as this, I particularly want to see the guilty punished. And so Mr. Chameleon assumes the disguise of Tony Larson, who has recently bought out a small stationery store. And we find him now in the store with Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold, patting the walrus moustache, which is part of his disguise. It's wonderful how a moustache can change the shape of a man's face, Dave. Yeah, but I don't like it, Mr. Chameleon. You're doing this, I mean. Hmm? Suppose the real owner of this store talks and goes around bragging that the police rented this place from him, in a manner of speaking. That's a chance I have to take. Uh, What about um, Jerry Carter, the brother-in-law of the murdered man? Uh, He's been released like you ordered. One of our detectives is tailing him. Dave, look out. Hmm? Get in the back room. Customer's coming in. Looks like an ugly customer. Get out of sight. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. And Dave Arnold ducks into a back room while Mr. Chameleon watches the approaching customer, a heavily built, evil-looking man, definitely a man who would stop at nothing. Then Mr. Chameleon speaks in the voice of Tony Larson, his disguise. Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? You the new owner of this stationery store? That's right. This is my first day on the job. You're my first customer. Well, ain't that dandy. I'm thrilled. My name is Bucky Walters, Mr... Uh, Uh, Larson. Uh, Tony Larson. Glad to know you, Mr. Larson. Have you seen the papers today? No, I haven't had time to read them. Look at this. Jerry Carter released on bail. Jerry Carter? That's the guy that murdered his brother-in-law, they think. The paper said he might be a firebug, too. Imagine someone like that running around loose, setting places on fire. A danger to the neighborhood. A danger to you. To me? Sure. That's why I'm here. 
I represent the Neighborhood Protective Association, and for a monthly fee, we keep an eye on your store here. You mean like uh, a watchman? Yeah, that's right. You couldn't get along without us, Mr. Larson. Well, uh, why? Uh, what would happen to me? Oh, lots of things might happen if you don't have our protection. Your, na- your windows might get broken by the neighborhood kids? Oh, by the Neighborhood Protective Association? Huh? Mr. Wallace, I know your racket, and I refuse to pay money to a gang of hoodlums posing as a protective association. Now listen, Mr. Lawson. No, you listen to me, sir. I am not the least bit afraid of you and your kind. You can try to damage my store, you can set it on fire. Funny you should mention fire. There's been a lot of them lately. Yeah, so I hear. And if you are threatening me... Could be, mister. A stationary store like this could burn up awful fast. All right. You can do what you please, but get out of my store and don't come back here again. Pretty fresh, ain't you? And pretty independent. Time was when every storekeeper around here belonged to the Neighborhood Protective Association. And those times are coming back. Yeah, well, maybe they ain't. Oh, yes, Mr. Larson, they've come back. If we have to make examples of you independent dopes. Oh, so you're threatening to kill me, huh? I wouldn't say that. But if I was you, I'd join our outfit within 24 hours. Dave. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. So you guessed right. That was one of the outfit. That was the salesman of the extortion ring. And what a salesman. Dave, you follow him and then have someone else put on his trail and pick him up. Well, what are you, where are you going, Mr. Chameleon? I'm going after bigger game. I think I'll pay another call on the murdered grocery man's widow, Mrs. Kendall. So you object to being questioned by the police, Miss Kendall? Well, I must remind you that your husband was murdered. Mr. Chameleon, I know it. And I know he was shot when my son Alfred and I said he was suffocated in that fire. But I swear I don't know who did it. I give you my word. Mr. Watson here knows my word is good. Well, that's as much as she can do, isn't it, Mr. Chameleon? It seems to me you're being mighty hard on this poor woman. She didn't shoot her husband. Oh, then you know who did? Well, no, of course I don't. I uh, probably shouldn't have asked you that question, Mr. Watson. I'm sure if you did, you would have told the police long before this. Well, I certainly would have. One point you uh, might help me on, though, is this. Did you ever hear of a thing called the Neighborhood Protective Association? Uh, Neighborhood Protective Association? Uh, No, never heard of them. Well, come, Mr. Watson. Needn't be afraid to talk. You own a prosperous hardware store here. This gang must have approached you one time or another. Well, in strict confidence, Mr. Chameleon, they did. But what did you do? Did you pay them off or... I tried a bluff. I picked up the telephone and threatened to call the police. But to be perfectly honest with you, Mr. Chameleon, I've been scared to death ever since. Mr. Watson, it is a pleasure for a police officer to run across a man with your sense of duty as a citizen. But I fear this doesn't help Mrs. Kendall's position very much. Help me? Mrs. Kendall, you are in a very bad position. And I believe you know you are. I tell you again, Mr. Chameleon, I don't know anything. I'm sure that you have a very good idea of who the firebug is in this murder case. No, 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 I don't. You are lying and you know you are. But that uh, won't make any difference. Within two days, we will have the firebug safely behind bars. Two days? Yes. So, uh, wouldn't it be better to talk now? I, I can't, Mr. Chameleon. Honest, I can't. Because I got nothing to tell you. But Mr. Chameleon is pretty sure that the trap will close on the firebug and the murderer. Not in two days, but that very night. And we find him around midnight, crouching in the darkness of the little stationery store which he rented in his disguise as Tony Larson. And with him is Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold, to whom he is saying... Maybe I've timed it wrong, Dave. I don't think so. I'm, I'm pretty sure the firebug will be at work tonight. As Tony Larson, I was much too independent. The Neighborhood Protective Association will have to discipline Larson by burning out his store. Hey, look, Mr. Chameleon. Someone's opening that back window. Yes. Yes, that's the window I deliberately left unmatched. Dave, get behind the counter. It's so dark he can't see us. 
He's carrying something, Mr. Chameleon. Yes. Probably a can of gasoline. Dave, there's someone else behind him. A woman. I thought she'd follow him. Miss... Alfred. Alfred. Who is it? Mother? Oh, Alfred, darling, I can't let you do this. I can't. It's too awful. Get away from here, you fool. No, no, people might be killed in this building, burned to death. Are you crazy? Get out of here, Mother. No. Get out before I do something I'm sorry for. All right, Dave, let's take over. Switch on the lights. Stay where you are, Alfred, Mrs. Kendall. This is one fire that is never going to get started. Mr. Chameleon. I thought you'd strike here next, Alfred. Dave, keep him covered. But how did you know? I had a hunch about you a long time ago, Alfred, and then I checked on your school record. For a long time, Alfred, mysterious fires were started and no one was able to find out who started them. Mr. Chameleon, he's a sick boy. He's always been a sick boy. Unfortunately, Mrs. Kendall, your son is also a criminal who has been responsible for many hideous deaths. Oh, no. Your husband, who pampered him, began to fear the truth. And that is why you and your husband quarreled so bitterly. Oh, why didn't you haunt me in before this? If you think I'm a firebug, why didn't you arrest me? Because there's an even greater criminal who's been using you, Alfred. Using your insane tendencies for his own purposes. The head of the Neighborhood Protective Association. Now, wait a minute. Ah. Even the mention of him terrifies you, doesn't it? I arrest you, Alfred, on the charge of murder by setting incendiary fire. Alfred! Alfred, my boy! Don't take him, Mr. Chameleon. Stand Don't. over there um, with your hands up, Alfred. Dave, get that man. <laughs> One more and I'll kill you. Now get in here. Ah, there you are, Mr. Watson. Cyrus Watson. What's this detective doing here, Chameleon? He tried to kill me. He brought you in here for me to charge you with murder, Watson. Well, this boy Alfred Kendall's the murderer. Working under your direction, Watson. The kindly, good Watson. Head of a vicious gang of killers, the Neighborhood Protective Association. Me, the head of a gang? That's it. The gang you were so perfectly honest and straightforward in lying to me about. This boy here did it. You killed Mrs. Kendall's husband, this mentally sick boy's father, because he knew that you were using his son's mania for setting fires for your own vicious purposes. That's a lie. If a shopkeeper wouldn't pay for protection, you sent this boy around to set his place on fire. That's what he did, Mr. Chameleon. Made a killer of my son. I'll tear that woman to pieces. Oh, sure. Hand on him, Dave. All right, Watson. I'll tell you how I got you. Yes, tell me, you lion pup. The thug that you sent to threaten the storekeeper, Larson, of the Neighborhood Protective Association, didn't know it was not Larson he was threatening, but a detective named Chameleon in disguise. What? And when we arrested him, he talked and talked and talked. He's a liar, too. This afternoon, I told you deliberately that we expected to catch the firebug. I knew that was the one thing that would goad you into action and bring you here, and it did. And we have got you right where we want you now. You go up for murder. And Alfred Kendall... So that lets Alfred out, Mr. Chameleon? No. No, Mrs. Kendall. Alfred will go into a mental institution where he will be... Protected from himself. Better for him and better for you. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Here's how to relieve a common early morning headache quickly. Instantly you get up, take two Bayer aspirin tablets with water, and chances are by the time you finish dressing, your headache is gone. Bayer aspirin works quickly because it starts to disintegrate within two seconds after you take it. You can see this two-second disintegrating action with your own eyes by dropping a Bayer aspirin tablet in a glass of water. What it does in the water, it does in your stomach. And because it's ready to go to work almost at once, you get really fast relief. In addition, you get dependable relief. Of all pain relievers, none can match Bayer Aspirin's record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So be sure to buy Bayer Aspirin. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece.
Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Dinner of Death Murder Case. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Marie Baumer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. After years of work, a revolutionary new toothpaste has been developed called Lion's Toothpaste. By actual laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth, it gets teeth two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands. Brighter by far than any other toothpaste. New Lion's Toothpaste does this because it's a new kind of toothpaste with a formula that's completely new and radically different. A remarkable toothpaste that cleans without soap and polishes without chalk. Try it. Ask for Lion's Toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Dinner of Death Murder Case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. One of the stronger Mr. Chameleon episodes in recent months, and clearly the rackets gave him a fitting object for some righteous anger, and I like to see that in him. And I thought the story was pretty strong throughout, well, after the beginning. I did think sending Mr. Chameleon into the fire was a bit silly. Any fires out there were cringing at the idea of sending an untrained police detective into the fire. It wasn't necessary, but one of the show's odd conceits is the super competence of Mr. Chameleon at everything and how anything right that happens has to be done by him. Uh, the series also did return to an idea of the most seemingly altruistic person being the villain, but I didn't mind it. They haven't been doing it every episode, so I honestly didn't see it coming. Well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day, and I want to go ahead and thank Haskell. Haskell has been one of our Patreon supporters since August of 2015. Currently supporting the podcast at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Haskell. And that will do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Be sure to rate and review the podcast wherever you download it from. We will be back next Thursday with another episode of Mr. Chameleon, but join us back here tomorrow for the conclusion of the Cranesburg matter where... Come in, Betty. Thank you. I've got to have it back, Mr. Dollar. Have what back? The gun you were trying to hide in the incinerator this evening? Yes, of course. You mean this one? Oh, yes. Please, Mr. Dollar. Somebody's trying to get me into trouble. Who? I don't know. I found that gun. That's the truth. Found it where? Hidden in a drawer in my room out at the cranes. Who put it there? I don't know. I don't know. When I saw it, I got scared. I was trying to get rid of it when you stopped me. And now, tonight, on the radio, it says a man's been shot. Did you know him? No. Do you know whose gun this is? I don't know anything about it. Oh, give it to me, please. I'd like to, Betty. But I'm afraid things aren't that simple. What do you mean? All right, Chief. It's all yours. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.